Hi, Gary here again. Perhaps you remember me with um, this focuser, the KISS focuser for the Lodestar. The first one, well, I'm back again. And I got the Generation 2. This is called the KISS Gen 2. Now, I made some improvements on it. If you notice with the old one, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Uh, we'll go here. I'll get a little closer so you can see this. The differences. You'll notice I have springs on this one on the earlier one, the Model 1, and then my focusing knob was over here. Now these are still good focusers, don't get me wrong, but I wanted to do something different and I wanted to eliminate this knob sticking out. So what I did is I came up with a different design and this is the prototype right here. And if you'll notice, there's a thumb wheel over here and it's not, that's not gonna be the finished product. Like I said, this is the prototype. But that thumb wheel allows you to adjust the camera up and down by going up and down like this. There's no springs here. Still pretty much zero backlash. Same old tie down screws. Now the unique part about this one is, for all you guys that have been crying about not having one for the SBIG camera, this one is bored out to fit directly onto the SBIG camera and that's what I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna back out here a little bit. Well, let's go back in one more time. You'll notice there's a step inside there. That step is to allow it to bolt right onto the SBIG camera. And of course, inside we have the same brass shim, so you're not gonna damage your SBIG camera, or you won't damage it, but you're not gonna scar it up. So we're gonna get to how that works. Back out a little bit here. My friend Dick Newell, Dick, put your head over so we can see who you are. <laughs> yeah, you too. Dick brought his SBIG camera over here. What model is this, Dick? This is That's the, an, an STF 8300. Okay, so this is the STF 8300 with the five position filter wheel and the SBIG off axis guider here. And I guess you can orient that right. any way you want. So the thing that Dick was concerned about and other people that I've talked to is you've got these lockdown screws here and when you unscrew them, you'll notice that the SBIG camera, the STI, just kind of wobbles around in there. The fit is really bad. There's like 20 thousandths clearance in there. And it makes uh, bringing the guide camera into focus a little tricky because the only way you can focus it is to actually lift that camera in and out of the tube like that. So you have to kind of just cinch your screws down real lightly and then lift the camera up. And if you notice it, it drops back in and it wobbles. So, so basically it's a pain in the butt. So Dick was down at Star Arizona and he was asking Dean Koenig, what can I do about that? And Dean says, I know just the guy you're looking for. So, so Dick kind of showed up on my doorstep over here with his camera and he said, can you help me? And I said, well, I got another, another focuser that's in development right now. And I said, probably can make it work on, on the, uh, the SB, SBIG cameras. So actually it wasn't gonna have this wide of a body down here, but in order to accommodate the other camera and also seems like the STI cameras, this tube here is a um, aluminum tube actually, I think. Uh, I don't think this particular part of it was machined out of a solid, but I could be wrong. But to me, I think it's an aluminum tube. It's not quite concentric, I should say round. And uh, it's, it, it kind of is out of round by two or three thousandths. So I had to open up the original barrel and I don't know why they have this top hat on here, but they do. So anyway, with this and not having that other knob sticking up like I do on the original uh, KISS 1 focuser, we'll call this the original, you can take the SBIG camera and it's still a little bit of a snug fit when you get down to the tube here, but you push it in there. Once I get it down past that part, and it just slides in. I've got to make sure my screws are unscrewed here on the clamp ring. And you can see that the SBIG STI, if I can hold that parallel, will slide in and out of there. Once everything is clamped down, it's, it's a lot easier to move that around, but with it loose, there we go. If you get it just right, it'll slide in and out of there. But that's nothing, it's just for, for starters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that out again 
and then I'm going to just kind of snug it down a little bit so it doesn't move around. Now, this part here, we're going to remove the original cinch down screws for the for the STI from the SBIG OAG, and a lot of uh, initials in there. And we're going to take this focuser and slide it, and you can see that it's a, I wouldn't say it's a snug fit, but if you put it on there straight, and of course I'm all fingers, it'll just slide it'll slide right down on there. There's only a couple thousands clearance, so you have to kind of drop it on there nice and straight and it goes right on. And then you'll take and orient it whichever way you want to. That is not important. The only thing that's important about that is where your thumb screws are that you'll use to tighten down the guide camera. And I'm going to zero in on that just a little bit more. We'll come a little closer. Now, as with the original focuser, you're going to use your 50 thousandths Allen wrench, and there are three screws, in, and I'm going to kind of line it up that way, and it's, again, it's all personal preference how you do that. And I'm going to screw the little screws that hold the KISS 2 focus, or second gen, onto the SBIG, and you can tighten those as much as you want. It really doesn't require a lot because there's three screws there. And I'm trying not to mar up Dick's uh, OAG. That's good enough. Okay, that's how it's mounted on there. It's not going to fall off of there. Now, what I'm going to do is, you guys should have a good idea of where your SBIG STI was in its original position when you achieved focus. And I think that, Dick, what did we come up with? Was uh, two, two inches, eight hundred thousandths? Yeah. yeah. So about eight and two and seven eighths. But I happen to have a rule here that's graduated in hundred thousandths. So what we're going to want to do is from the top of that ring that was on the, uh, the off-axis guider, which is a half inch from this position right here, if I was to put a mark there at the half inch, then the back end of the SBIG camera, the STI I should say, should be about two inches, eight hundred thousandths. So I'm going to loosen this now and slide that in so that the butt end right here, this end of the STI is 2 inches 800 thousandths or you'd have to add another 500 thousandths if you went to there. So once you got that approximately right, you can just lock down one of these screws. That keeps the STI from going in and out. And now what we're going to do is, as with the original Lodestar, we're going to, I think I need my 332nd Allen wrench here. Dick was good enough to bring the camera over. So then I'm going to tighten the clamp ring, just like the original model, like this, onto the STI body if I can get the Allen wrench in there. There we go. It doesn't have to be real tight, just snug. Once that's done, if you loosen the cinch screws now, you can see that there's a thumb wheel over here. If I adjust that thumb wheel, you'll notice the STI going down in and out of the body. Now I'm going to bring the camera in a little tighter on that so you can actually see it move. And I'll get that face out of the way. So here's a thumb wheel and this is a prototype wheel. I'm going to make a little bit better one but it's something I had on hand and I wanted to get this finished because Dick wants to try this out tonight if the weather is good. It's been lousy in Arizona. But you can see the STI now going down into the bore and then screwing it out. And if you were actually in your observatory, uh, you could, I don't know, it's easier to grab it from the one side with your thumb and wheel that up, but you can do it several ways. Put your finger against this screw and just kind of wheel it. Now you'll see the STI camera backing out and you have a lot of adjustment there, probably over a half an inch. So I'll just go one more time and with this thumb wheel, you'll see that I'll just lower the camera down in there. So achieving focus is going to be a snap. And then once you get done, you cinch these little screws down here. I got three on here. For the purest, one of them will work fine. There's a brass shim in there. You're not going to damage the STI body. And that's about it. We're going to back it out here. Now, this basically gives you the same kind of focusing that the original uh, 
KISS Model 1 focuser did, except that it's going to be a lot easier, a lot smoother, and you're not going to get all that wobbling around. When you're done, it's nice and tight. And uh, if you're interested in these, you can contact me. My, my uh, email address will follow this video. And of course, this is the prototype one. They're going to be anodized red, same as the STI, so it'll match, it'll match this camera. I'm also going to make this style focuser for, for other uh, cameras. Now, this will accommodate a Lodestar, a Lodestar X2, and I believe it'll go down far enough if, if I shorten these screws here to, um, to take care of the uh, putting the QHY5 camera in there. I, I haven't tried the QHY5 in there yet. I, I have no doubt that it'll fit. It's the same thing inch, inch, and, a, inch and a quarter body. The only thing I'm saying is it's going to be down in there quite a ways because the QHY5 is a very short camera. So therefore, I'm either going to have, I know I'll have to shorten these screws, but I may have to shorten this body a little bit. That's yet to be determined, but it's not a big deal. If I don't have to shorten the body and this clamping ring comes down close enough, I'm just going to leave it alone because it'll, it'll, uh, it'll accommodate more, more cameras that way. Now, being that I don't have uh, any screws sticking up here for the adjustment, even you'd probably even have luck luck with some of the Celestron or other cameras that have the wide back ends because the focusing screw is not here anymore. The focusing screw is on the side, of course. You've got to loosen those up before you focus it. But that's it. If you're interested, contact me. Thanks, for Dick, for bringing that. <laughs>